so this question has a lot of text, uh, but to kind of summarize it, at least I will try and summarize it. Uh, other folks can feel free to chime in if I'm misunderstanding the question. Uh, but what I understand is that you have multiple applications and these applications are producing tasks. In this case, the task happens to be sending some fixed size data packet, but from the abstract sense, they're trying to, to schedule tasks. And these tasks have different priorities. Uh, there's five priority levels and, and there are separate queues that that application is supposed to place their tasks in according to priority level. So priorities level one, two, three, four, and five. And each application can choose to use some subset of those priority levels. What makes this interesting is that there is a kind of single point of contention in the system. There is an audio mixer who is only able to do one task at a time. In this case, is only able to transfer one packet at a time. And that audio mixer wants to process the, the task, wants to transfer the packets in priority order. And uh, actually, it doesn't say here, but let's assume that that our priority level one is actually the highest level, I guess the, the most important or highest priority level. Uh, I don't think this question actually says one way or the other. Uh, so in theory, we should process all of the tasks in all the tasks across all of the applications at the highest priority level of Q1 prior to processing anything at the Q2 level and likewise going on down the line. What makes this a little bit more complicated is that every task, every packet has a timestamp and that timestamp is associated with the task in the queue. And that times the, the order in which tasks are processed is not just which which one is which queue which queue does it come from. It's also what task has the 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 soonest uh, timestamp in that particular queue. So there's both timestamps and priority levels that need to be considered amongst the various applications that are submitting these tasks. That's that's kind of the problem statement. Uh, before I go into any sort of ideas about a solution, any questions or concerns about that problem statement? All right, and maybe rather than me jumping into to my idea first, uh, let's let's turn it around this time. Uh, does anyone else have any kind of thoughts? And let's rather than this, let's not jump straight into the details of how to implement it. Uh, let's first talk about like, what are the major concerns or the major challenges that we are likely going to face to implement this or design and implement uh, this audio mixer? I think that's one of the first, first things that we always want to do when we're given, especially a big task, or at least a seemingly big task, is we want to step back and think about what are the big issues that we are likely going to need to overcome. And let's start thinking about how we will overcome those. Like rather than diving into creating data structures and writing code, let's just spend a couple minutes thinking and in an interview context, thinking out loud is always a good thing to do as well. Thinking out loud of what, what do I think the problems are going to be like? What makes this an inter interesting interview question? Almost any question you get, hopefully, is interesting and in that there's some, something that's difficult or challenging uh, or, trivial or ambiguous maybe about it. So for this question, what do we think might those might be? This is a combination of a hierarchical scheduler, uh, which need to be handled in a multiple uh, process context at a high level, right? And uh, then we also, there's a limited memory, so that technically already indicates, like which already question indicates. Uh, now we don't know how much limited memory it is. And um, what an, another thing which we need to identify here is that like, uh, what is the drop threshold and um, uh, basically ensuring that like um, 
uh, some of like what level we can uh, uh, some of these cues like we should not be uh, starred but uh, what are the draw uh, some sometimes like when what happen is like tail drop will happen because like uh, it may not be served all the cues may not be served in a given time we need to handle those scenarios yeah no absolutely the, you uh the, sorry, the latter point brought up was in particular really really noteworthy nothing here specifies what you're supposed to do or even whether you're supposed to do anything if the number of tasks being queued is greater than the bandwidth of the the in this case the audio mixer or i suppose the underlying hardware that it's programming uh, so what what do we do we need to handle that case and if we do, how are we going to handle it? So that is a fantastic early question to ask. Okay, so if that, if, if well, and I suspect there might still be a couple more high level th things we need to concern about, but if that's what we have at the moment, great. Uh, let's go kind of one level down. Uh, what sort of data structures or APIs or interfaces, but let's focus on data structure maybe first for this question. What sort of data structures do we think we're going to need to implement a solution for this. Does this problem hint or suggest any sort of things that we're going to need to implement as, as kind of subcomponents of our solution? It already mentions that there's going to be queue there for mm -hmm. each for each of the apps they have one or more queues sure uh anything anything noteworthy about those queues they're, they're priority queues because they are uh they are, they have a priority attached to them so you can make the priority queues in such a way that uh uh the yeah the elements are also sorted and based off of the timestamp that they come in because the actual content that goes in is the packet into the queue. Yeah, so uh, I think I think you you touched on a couple of good things there. Uh, yes, there are multiple queues, but the way that this question poses it, actually, they're not really priority queues. Because a priority queue would imply that there's there's things of different priority in that queue. In this case, there happens to just be independent queues and a finite number of independent queues mm -hmm. that, in and of themselves, ha are given a different priority. But each one of these cues, and I think you said this as well, uh, can probably best be described as a sorted queue. It's going to be yeah. sorted based off of, well, sorry, let me take a step back. Uh, we've This problem says that we need to handle the packets in timestamp order. At least that's yeah. one of the requirements. So not that we have to do it this way, but it kind of hints that maybe what we want to do is keep our cues in, in a sorted Q U E U S. Uh, keep our cues in a sorted order per the timestamp. I said that, that was kind of what at least I was kind of taking from this. Like, yes, I'm going to need to implement some sort of queue data structure, and for any one of these cues, it will have its entries. Well, I'm I'm going to I'm going to want to have its entries in timestamp order, such that the, the well, I guess it could go either way, but I'm gonna say that the the next upcoming event should at, be at the head of the queue and the event that is gonna happen furthest in the future sits at the tail of the queue. And anytime a new task comes in and I insert it into the queue, I'm gonna insert it in the appropriate uh, kind of order, if you will. So, I. Uh, Obviously, there's lots of different ways of implementing a sorted queue. Uh, I happen to, well, I happen to be more comfortable with linked lists than other data types. So maybe I might be like, okay, no, I'm gonna, I probably gonna have a a doubly. Actually, I don't even need a doubly linked list, do I? I will probably have a single, sing, singly, uh, singly uh, linked list. And that should be sufficient for me to be able to uh, scan the list and insert it 
in timestamp order. Not to say there isn't a more efficient way of doing it. Maybe we could use some sort of uh, tree to have a more efficient insertion for time. But for me, my instinct, once again, is because I'm more, more comfortable with implementing a link linked list than I am implementing a specialized tree, I might shy first towards that singly linked list. What else do people think in terms of uh, data structures or APIs that are needed here? How do we determine like which queue say, yeah, from within a particular queue, we are sorting it and we are going in the chronological order. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Like the queues have priorities. So we need something like a, is it like a round robin thing that goes around the queues, like sampling data from each queue because each app has different queues here, right? That is also an excellent observation. That I, I would say this is both a, a implementation question that will need to be ultimately addressed, but also something that, is unspecified in this question. This question doesn't, doesn't really mandate or indicate how you might want to do that. If for instance, app A and app B are just queuing a constant stream of priority one tasks, mm -hmm. such that either one of those applications would, would be capable of, of consuming all of the bandwidth, do we want to, to switch back and forth such that app one gets to queue one task and then app B gets to queue one task and, and vice and again, vice versa. Uh, or do, is it, is it acceptable for us to consume all of app one's Q1 queue first, assuming the timestamps uh, allow for it before doing app or uh, Q uh, app B. So, Hopefully, the timestamp between the timestamp and the queue, in theory, that should answer that question. Uh, but we can obviously think of pathological cases where one app might get uh, might kind of starve out the other app, at least for a period of time, with regards to this audio mixer. So, so Glenn, the, um, this is Prabhu here. I I, I posted this question. Oh, excellent. So. so the, the the queue is not shared. So, for example, Q1 and Q uh, A has a separate Q1, and B has a separate Q1. So they sure. okay. So they don't share a single queue. They have their own queues, but they they are in different priority. They are they could be in the same priority level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's actually an interesting thing. So that if if we if we weren't given this we could have potentially implemented this system as just a single queue mm -hmm. where each entry in the queue specifies its priority and timestamp. And we have a sorted queue that's sorted on both priority and timestamp. So that actually could be a potential solution to this, but this, this, this middle paragraph uh, even though it says example, at least strongly hints, and uh, in, in, I guess from your perspective, mandates separate queues per application. Yeah. Uh, but at, at a high level, it's it's kind of six of one, a half dozen of the other. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to the implementation, I don't necessarily want to dig too much into the implementation, but conceptually what we're going to want to do is uh, have... Uh, Let's see here. So we have our audio mix. Uh, let's, let's zoom out a little bit more. So our, our audio mixer is presumably going to need to have uh, at least one API, if not multiple. Uh, one API is going to need to be uh, NQ. Uh, what are these things called? NQ packet, I suppose, is the best name. And I'm going to need to specify both the packet itself, which might just be some series of bytes. There, there, will, there might be a length 
to that that packet. I, I don't actually know much about audio mixers, so I'm just assuming that like any other packet, there's going to be a, uh, a series of bytes and a length for those bytes. Uh, and then we'll need to specify the one of two things. We, we presumably need to specify the priority level. Priority. Uh, and this might be something that is is best described as like an enum where you have some sort of, and then you have your levels one, two, three, four, or five with some sort of usable name. So then you pass in that appropriate enum here in this MQ packet function. Uh, this is at least this kind of, this is kind of my, my initial reaction of how I might go about doing this. And the other thing that we also need to know is from which app is this coming from? Is once again we need to store these things in separate queues, so we need to know which which app is it coming from. And this is why I said there's kind of two ways for us to do this. We could simply have here some sort of uh, app ID that's passed in in this single in queue packet function, or maybe because of how the audio mixer worked, what we actually wanted to have in advance was something like a register app sort of function such that you could register your new app and then get back some sort of handle that you then pass into in queue packet from then on or in, if we were living in the c plus plus world uh we might get our handle might be a c plus plus class of which in queue packet is a member function so several different ways of going about doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure which way is best offhand, but having an app ID. And then finally, of course, we have to have that timestamp. So if we have this one great big function that takes in all this input, then our NQ packet is essentially then going to need to put things, put things in the appropriate queue. Uh, Glenn, quick question. Yep. So uh, the question mentions that each app has its own queues and yep. everything has to go to the audio mixer. So can we assume here that the audio mixer at its end has its own single queue through which it processes things. It picks stuff from all these queues, all these queues feed into that single queue of the audio mixer itself. Is I, that an... So once again, not being the one who initially uh, wrote this question, if you will, what I see here is that there's one of many queues shared between the apps and audio mixer, uh, which to me implies that they're, they're at least the, the, the fact that they're being shared implies that, that uh, there isn't a separate queue okay. that the audio mixer is using. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. It's shared. Uh, but this also is an interesting concept as well. My instinct once again is to have this sort of function where within NQ packet, it, it does kind of what, what you think it would do. Uh, it would, you would probably have some table of all of your apps and you'd go into app ID. And then within that, there would be five linked lists. So then you'd go into, uh, let's say Q, Q1 or whatever the Q number happens to be. And then you would, uh, do a queue insert on that queue. Like th th that's essentially the implementation of this function would be to look up the the structure for the app that you passed in, figure out which queue it needs to be based off of the priority level that was passed in, and then you would call your in queue insert function, which maybe you also have to implement in the case of this, this, this question, in which case you would need to implement the code for a sorted insert. And a sorted insert is, once again, at least with regards to our singly linked list, a pretty straightforward thing to do. You start at the head of the list and you keep going back until you find the spot that your entry needs to be inserted. And then you update the next pointers uh, for those entries. So uh, the, the queue insert for a sorted list is, is a relatively straightforward thing to implement. This function 
is also now a relatively straightforward thing to implement. The code isn't particularly complicated. It's just looking up things based off of ID and priority and then calling insert on the appropriate item, uh, potentially okay. needing to allocate some memory that you would use to store that that entry. Yes, there was a question. Yeah, this is Subhash here. Uh, I, I was, one question I had was like, <clears throat> is this a push model or a pull model from the from the audio mixer point of view? So you have multiple apps, each app, app has its own queue, each queue has its own priority. And that priority is global, I guess, across the across the across the apps so <clears throat> audio i mean the apps would have its own way to fill in the queue right uh, someone might be queuing in the individual queues uh, and assuming that the audio mixer is the one who is uh, who is going to mix it so it has to access those queues so as you mentioned it the the application can register with the audio mixer saying okay this is my app id and uh, probably could also pass in saying okay these are my queues right and with the priorities that they have. So audio mixer, when it runs periodically on, on the timer take, it has to pull the data from each queue based on their priority and mix it up and, and uh, uh, put it in the in the output queue, which which, which would be consumed by probably probably a, uh, a DAC or, or some other audio driver, right? <clears throat> yes, exactly. So what I had in mind at least is that this in queue packet would be this in queue packet function would be responsible for placing potentially allocating memory and then placing the entry on the appropriate queue and then there would be a separate thread whose job is to in a loop wait for there to be space or wait wait for the whatever the hardware contention is uh it sounds like it's it's in terms of space but whatever whatever it happens to be wait for the hardware to have space then you'd implement a routine to get to the top task. And hopefully you can see getting the top task ends up being fairly trivial. We iterate through all of the applications, priority one queues, looking for the times, one of the, 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 the closest timestamp. Then we iterate through the priority two queues with the closest timestamp and so on until we find the top task that needs to be run. And then we uh, do hardware action whatever whatever it means to actually send this task to the hardware we write that code uh presumably they would need to provide some api for us to do that or maybe all they wanted was some sort of pseudo code to do that in the context of the, this interview question but then our other thread is just in a loop doing these three things over and over again and what that then means is that our nq packet function over here needs to have the appropriate mutexes so that we don't try and get the top task at the same time as we are inserting a new task. Uh, but we can probably get away with just a single course level lock that locks the entire entire system, if you will, uh, whenever we're in queuing. And then similarly, whenever we need to get the top task, we can lock all of the queues in order to get it. Because once again, conceptually, even though this problem tells us we need to have a billion different queues and then figure out which is the top thing amongst them, logically, it is still just a single uh, sorted priority queue. And when it comes to locks, we're always trying to lock the logical thing, not necessarily trying to lock the, the actual implementation. So logically, we need to, to choose the top task amongst all of the queues Therefore, we want a single lock to lock all of the queues to make sure that when we actually get the top task, it was the actual top task at that particular point in time. Oh, so 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 one question. Uh, so the queues that we are talking about are, are priority queues in, in the sense that they are they are they are ordered by the ordered by the timestamp, right? Not the the actual priority. Yeah. Uh, so yep. the <clears throat> the NQ packet. Uh, that's the API that's given by audio mixer, right? Yes, I'm assuming that in this scenario, that would be the, the singular API that the audio mixer library needs to expose. So, and we are expecting the apps to basically push their uh, the data from the queue to the to this uh, NQ packet, right? Uh, I'm, I guess I am expecting that whenever an app has something new that it thinks it wants to do, 
it inserts it into the queue or calls in queue packet. Okay. Okay. So 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 yeah, uh, and that that was the that was my question initially. Whether it's a push model or a pull model. So what we are seeing is this is a push model where I mean, from the app's point of view, they will they will push the. Uh, so <clears throat> in that case, if, why would we really need the queues on the on the app side, right? They they can always queue it into this audio mixer queue, right? I, I would argue the same thing that that having separate queues in the audio mixer probably aren't necessary. Uh, this might be something that you discuss with the interviewer. If they give you this text, maybe you like actually follow like is is this truly needed? Is there some reason why we want why you're giving me this constraint or this requirement that I'm not aware of? Maybe they just want to see if you're capable of doing it, even though it may not actually be the logical thing to do. Uh, but with regards to the, the poll model that, that you mentioned, uh, I think it might be worth looking at that very brief, briefly as well. Uh, because then, then, be, be, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Before mm -hmm. we go there, sure. how do we handle the priority? Let's say if I have, let's say uh, there are app A, app B, and app C, and they each have one queue each and then they, they have the queue has the priority like app epic you has priority one two and three assuming the the higher priority is the higher priority three is the higher priority and both of them let's say it has a is an audio packet data at timestamp zero uh, and both of them have in queued so are we are we saying we'll we'll drop the uh, audio packet from uh, priority one and two and just take the priority three data i well, at least how I read this is that the higher priority entry always has priority over the lower entry, regardless okay. of that lower pri lower entry's timestamp. Okay, so uh, I mean, uh, to, I mean that makes sense. I mean, to simplify the uh, design, we could think think of it as like we're dropping the lower priority and just consider the higher priority, right? Yeah. The, so when you say that. dropping, I mean this the qu the question question says the earliest time the packets need to be processed as as opposed to the latest time the practice needs to be processed. So we can't process something until that timestamp, until that time yeah. has passed. Yeah. But there yeah. isn't yeah. any upper bound in terms of how old something can be before we don't want to process it anymore. That's interesting. Okay. okay. And that's actually, I think, something that uh, I forget who it was at the very beginning pointed out that we mentioned right here is, do we want to have some sort of drop threshold? If something has gotten so old, is it now just a waste of memory keeping it in the queue if we never think we actually are going to get around to doing it? And that's somewhat of a rhetorical question. Like, this be a, the kind of question you might ask the interviewer, like, do I need to have this sort of support or do, would yeah. you like me to implement and design it? There isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer for whether it's needed in kind of this generic question sense. Sure, sure, makes sense. I think Prabhu was asked this question. Did, uh, if, I'm not sure whether he wants to add something, but. Uh, but yeah, so I want, I, I see there's a hand up. One, one second, though. Um, uh, there are, once again, this, this was kind of the model that came to my mind first because I like it that essentially everything related to the, the, pending packets is owned by the audio mixer library, if you will. Uh, so all of the cues are owned by the audio mixer, the, the mutex is owned by the audio mixer, uh, all that kind of stuff. The other models, the, 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 the poll model, if you will, where the individual applications are the ones that own and manage their pending tasks, and it's the audio mixer that queries to the app, like, hey, uh, get me your, or oh, return to me your most, re your, your uh, most upcoming priority one task, or get me your most upcoming priority two task, whatever, whatever that poll operation happens to look like, it then becomes much harder to ensure that at any given time, you're actually doing the right thing. Because if you have to pull app A, then pull app B, then pull app C, it's possible that something new has gotten into app A while you've been going through all this process. And by the time you actually get to the point where you're going to uh, transfer the packet or queue it with the hardware itself, 
it's possible that what you're queuing isn't actually the best thing to have queued. Uh, yeah, so, so that, that's kind of my, 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 my concern around that. Not, not that that isn't a possible solution though. Yeah, the, the, the question when this question was uh, explained to me, I mean, from, from this discussion, what I can understand, it's most likely uh, it was explained like a push model. So the queues are owned by the apps and they are queuing up those packets on their own. They are not asked to, you know, or queue, queue up by the mixer. So basically they, they are uh, they are pushing the packets to the queue on their own. And then just to follow up, to how does the mixer ultimately retrieve those packets? So the mixer is basically is trying to retrieve the package, uh, pretty much uh, the logic that you have, right? So the mixer's responsibility is to take the uh, pending or queued up task and mix them and put it in this odd hardware, right? And the hardware has a limited. So it's, the mixer's job is to try to flush out the package to the, to the hardware, but the hardware has a limited uh, space. Um, okay, I, I I think I see what you're getting at. So what you're saying is that the queue is literally shared between the app and the audio mixer. Exactly. And uh, the application would be expected to acquire some lock, and that once again the lock would also be shared between the two. But the application okay. would acquire some lock, stick it in the appropriate queue in the appropriate location, unlock. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then the mixer thread over here will access the exact same queue, locking the same lock uh, to figure out what it is it needs to do. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That. Uh, so for that, uh, just to, to go into that a little bit more, just how in terms of how it changes from what I was going through here. There's a couple of things we need there. We, oh. Glenn, before you go there, I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, we can discuss about that, but the, the focus is more on like hey, how, what would be the um, the uh, the design of the audio mixer, right? Not 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 really uh, towards how these cues are shared. Uh, what so would I, be the design the on the mixer? On what? what it's focused on the design of the mixer, like how how efficiently the mixer can flush out these packets from the queue and allocate it in the hardware, right? Because now it has few constraints, right? It has these different, this has queues with different priority level and that those packets have timestamp and this hardware has limited space. So that is the constraint I've been presented to, to me to work on. Okay, so I guess for me, from, from your perspective then, uh, what, is, what is your, your uh, conclusion or instinct if, if you have, if you, in this case, at this exact example, app A with Q2 and one, two and five and app B and one, three, four and five, uh, what would be, what would be a faster or better or worse way of going about that? So I think, um, I think the first constraint is the priority, right? So we, we look at the priority, mm -hmm. um, the, the IS priority queues and try to flush some uh, package from that and now the next constraint would be let's say you have two two packets um, at the same priority level then then we have to uh, look at the timestamps yep. to see with which one which one should go first um, now on the other side uh, that that is that is far I got to but um, on the other side, I don't know how to handle this limited um, hardware situation. Yeah, so I guess what I'm curious about is that what you've described is, is a is, is a task that requires time to implement, but there isn't necessarily a design decision involved with it. Like, you need to identify, you look at the queues first and then you look at the timestamps, but it, it's the kind, that's the kind of thing where like there's, at least in my mind, there's only one way of doing it. You, you query, you query all the apps that have a queue one mm -hmm. to see which one has the earliest timestamp. Uh, 
and then you go on. So I suppose maybe I was making this question more complicated than it needed to be because I I didn't I didn't think that that was the interesting part of what well, sorry. My very first question I had for all of you guys about this this question was like, well, what's what's the interesting part of this question? What is it that's going to be challenging? And I didn't take that to necessarily be a challenge. So I am probably still potentially missing something uh, on this front. Yeah. yeah, probably. I mean, probably uh, me as well, right? Um, but uh, this is this is what I got to uh, um, in this question. No, no, and, and no words wrong. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you didn't mind my digressions then with all the topics that we talked about. Uh, but if 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 for some reason I were to ask a question like this, uh, the things that once again I'm not asking this question, but if if I were uh, the question of how are these designed, what do the APIs look like, and how would you implement those functions, uh, would all be kind of part of what I'd like to see someone do. It sounds like mm -hmm. for you, they were more looking at like, what was the implementation of this as opposed to what is the design for this? Uh, but regardless, I think they're all potentially interesting questions and there's hopefully there's a, a world in which these things on the left are also discussed. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this is actually just a fantastic example where I I read this question and had a particular instinct of what needed to get done and, and how it needed to get done. But what the interviewer, or at least what it sounds like the interviewer was looking for was something fairly different than what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. And this is where at the very beginning I said, oh, we need to, we need to identify what are the major challenges and then go into... Uh, what are kind of the major data structures or APIs that we're going to need to implement or use? And if you if you out loud go through that process with the interviewer, that's when they're going to hopefully correct you or push you or give you more information about what they actually wanted you to do. So when you start talking about, oh, I need to implement the linked list and I'm going to have to implement this function, they can be like, oh, no, 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 that stuff already exists. Uh, we just want you to use it. Or, oh, no, you're, you're thinking about this wrong. Do it this way instead. Like, that's when they can correct you. But if you yeah. do all of the thought process that I was doing completely in your head and quietly, and then just start writing code, it might be 20 minutes later before the interviewer realizes, because you're just writing code, it's hard necessarily for them to follow along if you're being quiet, what it was, what it is that you're trying to do and by that point, it might be too late for you to switch gears and do it the way that they wanted you to do it in the time period you have for that interview. It, it really happened. <laughs> so that really did happen. So I, I did make some assumptions and I started um, you know, going through I, and basically you know, the same instance I had, I started putting those packets in one queue, right? For example, we talked about this, right? Um, having one Q1, I mean, one Q at the priority level one and start putting queues, uh, the packets from various apps, but then he corrected me saying, no, 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 you cannot mix them. They are the separate separate queues. So he was, he was just pushing me towards this, this right side saying, don't worry about those things. You know, they are all separate queues. They are all maintained. So you just have to focus on designing the uh the mixture part yeah yeah and this is this is a very common thing and and obviously there's there's some interview questions that might be better than others about being more evident what it is they're trying to get you to do but the end result is that the interviewer has a very short period of time to be with you i mean uh, the technical question might be in 30 minutes to an hour in terms of how much time they have to get you to do something they might their goal might be to see quite narrowly, how do you do this particular task? Uh, so not that the things over here aren't interesting things to do in and of themselves, but it just happened to be not what they wanted to see from you or not, yeah. not the part of the problem they wanted to see. Uh, and so I think that that happens, that happens a lot. Uh, so make, make, making it clear what it is that you're planning to do before you do it is a, is, a, is a good opportunity both to show that you're good at design work, hopefully, uh, that you're good at communicating 
this communicating your design, communicating your implementation, at least in my mind, is is not too far off from how important it is to actually be good at design work. If you if you're a great designer but can't communicate your design, uh, it doesn't really matter that you're a great designer. So being able to design, being able to communicate the design and the intended in uh, implementation is very valuable and then obviously helps avoid these sorts of uh, confusions. Makes sense, makes sense. Thanks. So, uh, sorry, I mean, if you if you look at like a real audio mixer, right, you have a real-time data and if the timestamp has passed, not sure there is a need for mixing it, but the this timestamp here is something different. It just denotes that earliest time the packet needs to. I mean, I, I, I'm still not sure what this question and the priority and the time means here. I mean, if the if the audio mixer's task is to mix multiple streams of uh, audio input, uh, if the time has passed for a certain certain stream, what's the point of mixing it in in the in the future? where other other audio stream has already moved forward so and um, there's nothing saying this has to be a real time audio mix so this could be you have a bunch of uh, saved audio files that say that you're replaying and remixing together in right. a way that is kind of post processed so i'm saying i'm just hypothesizing but uh, maybe, uh -huh. maybe that's what they're trying to get at here okay okay sure. uh, but you're right it, it it does seem a little bit because some of these constraints just in general seem a little bit silly, but I, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that whoever asked this question, or at least whoever wrote this question initially, probably worked on a system that behaved this way. And what they were trying to do was to ask you a question about a system they worked on mm -hmm. and giving you constraints that match the constraints of the behavior of their system, but without necessarily going into all of the answers of why their system worked that way. Okay. Uh, I, I, I see that a lot as well as interviewers like to ask, well, a lot of interviewers like to ask questions in the domain that they, that they work. Uh, and in part because they're most familiar with that and most knowledgeable. And also in part because if you're interviewing with them, you might be working in that domain as well. So they're curious to see how well you can do doing that sort of thing. Uh, so I, I, I think, and, and, and I, I see this a lot, uh, especially if I'm, if I'm looking at uh, like an interview panel and I'm looking at what other people asked a particular candidate, I can, I can, even if there aren't names attached to it, I can almost always guess who it was who asked the particular question because the question that they asked matched something that their team did or does uh, for, for better or worse. Okay, makes sense. But Glenn, uh, would you would you mind just uh, summarizing the the approach that we came up with? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and before and I, I haven't I'm forgotten about you. I'm gonna get to you in just a second. <laughs> sure. Uh, sorry, Glenn. Actually, yeah, one one other comment I had was like in this thing, uh, the there are two apps, um, which is uh, basically they have not defined what are the priorities or anything between that. Like, uh, should we treat equally, or do we know? Oh, what did you follow up on that? Um, no, um, the, the, if if they are at one, uh, like so, like Q one, they are at the same priority. So Q three would be in a different priority. Q five, all Q fives will be in the same priority. Yes, yeah, so that was kind of getting at this question we talked about earlier. Was if there are if there are two tasks that are equally good, let's say, uh, between two apps, how do we choose which one to do? Uh, so I think you're kind of asking that kind of same question in a different way. So, uh, uh, Dragan, uh, do you want to ask your so question? Because, like, uh, we, didn't, we didn't know which one, App A and App B are equal priority. Uh, although I understand Q1 and Q1 for different apps are same. Mm, like between yeah. the apps. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the Q Q one for A is equally equally important, if you will, as Q one for B. Yeah. Go, cool. uh, uh, Dragon. Uh, sorry, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to uh, kind of I was thinking about we we talked about the uh, time time at the at the mixer output and then timestamps and my thinking is that they're not related at all. 
Um, my thinking is that at the mixer output, uh, there is uh, like a, like a, how do you say, there's some kind of clock, uh, output clock, which is uh, increasing, monotonically increasing. And based on this clock, audio mixer will, um, I guess there will be some kind of FIFO in the mixer. And then based on this clock, FIFO will be uh, by like uh, uh, packets or uh, uh, packets will be taken from this FIFO. And then at one point when this FIFO goes below a certain watermark, that's that's actually uh, the time when when this mixer will look into these queues and pull data from, from the highest priority queues, from the highest and then going to the lowest priority queue. Um, and then um, fill this FIFO up to you know certain certain level, so I think I think these timestamps are just to kind of uh, give uh, uh, like for the same priority queue uh, give order in, in, uh, of these uh, uh, you know packets, but these timestamps are not related to the time at the output. I think. Yeah, yeah that's I think that's of, a, 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 yeah. a totally valid and probably a likely a likely interpretation of how this is supposed to be used. Uh, what's kind of inter interesting is that some of the questions that we've been talking about here uh, very much matter when it comes to our design. Some of the questions that we've been talking about here don't matter really much to the design, but matter more for the implementation, such like the questions of, of round robin or the drop threshold. Like from a design perspective, those don't really matter. Those affect the implementation. And there's also questions that we've been talking about here that don't really affect either. Like there's, there's things about how this is going to be used that potentially don't matter regardless of what the answer is. And it sometimes is hard to tell which of those categories a particular question lands in. So it's more of an observation than anything else. Uh, but I think some of the things we've talked about here is like, well, it doesn't really matter for example, how the hardware does what it does, as long as we know what it is we're supposed to put into the hardware, for instance. So Glenn, can we, can we consider this design of a system, the system that Prabhu was asked to design, uh, for lack of a better term, can we call it kind of a scheduler that would pick uh, stuff from these queues, all these independent app queues that have some kind of priority, the content is sorted based on timestamp. So this is some kind of scheduler that helps picking the data from this queue and putting it into the hardware FIFO because it says the hardware has like limited memory. So we could assume that is a hardware FIFO of fixed size. So this scheduler's job that he's asked to design is to get data from these queues and put it into the hardware FIFO. And whatever happens after that is what the hardware takes care of. Uh, yes, so, I mean, I, I think that implementing the scheduler is, it sounds like is what Prabhu was, okay. was, was describing what kind of was, what he was being, being directed to answer. But if you note the original question says design the audio mixer software component. Like it doesn't say just once again, I realize what Prabhu was, was kind of redirected to ask might be different, but mm -hmm. what the, the text of this doesn't say just implement this. It, it at least here is implying that it wants you to do all of this. Okay. Yeah. I, I think the, uh, the initially the question was posted just like that, right? Like, was like okay, can you design the, this audio mixture software component? But then slowly, I was directed to 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 the scheduler. Yeah, and there's also another point uh, to be had here is it's I, I and I'll do this as well. Is sometimes I will have a question in mind I want to ask ask the candidate, and depending on how much time I have remaining, I might direct them to just solve part of the problem as opposed to solving all of it, because I know there isn't enough time anymore to solve all of it. Or similarly, if I give a candidate the problem that I'm well hoping that they're gonna solve all of it, but if they're going really slow, like they're just taking a long time to do it, rather than have them solve a big problem superficially, I'll kind of wipe away some of the problem 
and say, you know what, like just to skip that, let's just focus on getting one thing right. So we accomplished something, at least in the context of the interview, as opposed to just spinning our wheels and doing nothing. So uh, not that I'm not that I'm saying that one of these things happened here with you, Prabhu, but it's possible that uh, uh, a question like this, the interview might have been kind of on the fly, if you will, uh, narrowing the scope in order to match the time scale that he had, you guys had left in that interview. Yes, I mean, it's sort of true. Um, um, we kind of ran out of time uh, uh, by the end. Um, yeah, but but uh, but I didn't feel that it was he was he was uh, driving me to that direction because of the time because he did um, hinted even um, like uh, even after five minutes of starting of the interview. So yeah. Oh yeah. And I, and, yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't the fly on that wall, uh, but I, just saying. And what I just described was is is a totally common thing you you would see in an interview. Uh, where the interviewer really wants to ask a particular question uh, and is willing to change the scope of that question rather than changing the question entirely mm-hmm. to to get it, to get some sort of answer from you in that that time period. Makes sense. All right. Let's see. So, um, Glenn, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, like in order to piggyback on top of that, so. Apart from in lines with this question, if you're given any question that has multiple producers and a single consumer, so is it a good strategy like to talk about the push model, the pull model based on what the actual application type is, like for a general multiple producer, single consumer uh, case like this? What is your recommendation for that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a good question. I'm trying to think of is there any case where I would want a poll model so the the i mentioned well the advantages of of this push model is that a single entity owns all of the the pending tasks owns uh the mutex owns owns everything they they have a complete picture and they can look at that picture whenever they want and there is a a clear and well-defined interface between in this case the apps and the, the 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 mixer software uh, and, and I think having a clear and well-defined interface is a, is, a, is a significant benefit as well. The issue with the poll model, one is the interface gets a little bit more complicated uh, because now who's responsible for locking or what does that interface look like? Does, does the software mixer have a callback function that they call into the application and the application then has some code to figure out which task to pull back or is it what Prabhu mentioned where there is literally a set of cues and in in memory and both the app and the mixer both have access to that memory and can read and write from that memory uh together uh because when you start having that sort of implementation you you uh, you obviously have concerns uh, about the concurrency and, and race conditions and so on. If we're, who's, who's locking? Are they using the right kind of locks? Uh, are you going some sort of lock list system? So the push model, in my mind, ends up being easier to describe and easier to implement. And the question is, is like, so once again, at least from my mindset, maybe, maybe there's, there's an exception to that. Uh, I love to hear other people's thoughts as well. But from the poll model, what, what are the potential things that we're getting from it? Like if the implementation, if the design and uh, implementation is more complicated, what are we going to gain from that complication? And there's a couple of things we can potentially gain. One is uh, with the model I described, apps are only ever pushing tasks. And a task will sit within the mixer potentially indefinitely, depending on uh, how low priority it is. It's once again, maybe in this in this audio mixer case, it isn't it isn't applicable, but it's possible that a task might want to dynamically change the sorry, an app might want to dynamically change the tasks that are submitted at any given point in time. In other words, an app might have more than just priority and timestamp that it wants to take into consideration. Uh, maybe the app knows better 
what to do in the case of, of uh, whether or not we need to drop something. Uh, so when the app knows more, or if the app is just more knowledgeable or has more insight into how things are going to be controlled, then that whole question of then the, the notion of an interface becomes ends up being simpler for the app to manage all of that rather than to try and define an interface that is complex enough that the app can communicate to the mixer exactly what needs to be done in each one of these scenarios. So maybe to answer your question a bit more concisely, I think a the the pull model of this multiple producer single consumer. Uh, the pull model ends up being more attractive when when the producers have more knowledge and want more control over what is being being produced. Does that make any sense? Yeah, when the yeah. Uh, so and and I I once again this is all kind of off the top of my head. I'm, I'm I uh, I have to, I, ha I have to say that most of the times I've, I've done things it has been in this once again I like how someone called it push pull uh, in this push model. Uh, and I'm trying to think of any scenarios or in, well interview questions or just real life examples that I can think of where the poll model ended up being better. Uh, and I guess the other case where the poll model is better is when the, it's the once again, in the context of a soft, in the software mixer, if this software mixer wants to drive the timing. So let me, let me give you a sensors example, because once again, sensors is my background. I uh, the sensor hardware can in theory generate a new sensor sample anytime it's queried. So if you want samples faster, you query it faster. If you want samples slower, you query it slower. But it's a hand wavy sort of sort of statement. Uh, so yes, you can program the sensor to interrupt your framework when a new new sample is available but if the framework is the one who ultimately cares about how how often it wants samples then it makes more sense for the framework to pull and to drive that that uh that sequence of events so in this scenario if if the software mixer or sorry if the audio mixer wants to drive the oh how to best put this um uh, let's say app a and app b rather than producing data and, and putting it in a queue it's possible that app a and app b just sit there and do absolutely nothing until they're queried and anytime you query them they will produce a task for you but they won't produce a task unless you query something uh, I I know more about video than audio, but let's take the H.264 case where you have progressive frames in between your iframes. So you can create a progressive frame that spans the last uh, five milliseconds, or you could create a progressive frame that only spans the last one millisecond. And it's all up to whoever's driving the 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 signal if you will for how often we want to create progressive frames so the frame the, the encoder can create a frame whenever it is that you want it to create and to create a frame uh so the, the encoder could potentially push the frames out but what really matters is the entity who's going to be receiving those frames it's only going to send frames and it wants to send frames so it can instead query from the encoder give me a new frame that spans the time period since the last frame was produced. I don't know if that example helped either as well, but I was just trying to give some examples where, where a poll model actually ends up being the right choice 
in a multiple producer, single consumer world. Uh, but it really has to do with the notion of these tasks, are they, are they wholly independent tasks or are they relative to other tasks? And is it possible that multiple tasks could be combined together if you had full knowledge of when things were going to be processed? Uh, uh, Dragan, uh, go ahead. I was just thinking aloud uh, when you said about pool model. So is this something kind of uh, when we have a situation where a producer produces on demand, then then that's when we uh, will go with the pool model. Well, yeah, and it's not I mean, uh, if a producer produces on demand, then, then obviously the pool model probably makes more sense. But there's lots of cases where you, you could do it either way. Uh, and once again, I'm going to go to the H264 case, because I think that actually ends up being the more, more applicable example here, or the easier example to understand. Uh, you could program your encoder so that it produces a progressive frame once every 30 milliseconds. That, that, is, that is something that you could program it to do, because you want a 30, 30 uh, frames per second output. But what if you don't know what that output is going to be? What if the output is based off of some things out of the encoder's control? Uh, if, for example, it's uh, camera frames coming from the camera on your, on, well, in this case, my, my display, if those camera frames are being sent over USB to the host, to my, to my MacBook, if USB is busy, if USB isn't, doesn't have any bandwidth to send another frame, well, well what, what was the point in creating the frame? Why create a frame if you're not gonna be able to send it out? It makes more sense to just wait until there actually is bandwidth to send out a frame and then create a progressive frame that spans that entire time period since whenever the previous frame was produced. So because the person producing the frames, the encoder in this case, doesn't have the complete knowledge of the world, doesn't know how the frames are ultimately going to be used, it doesn't have the ability or the knowledge to push frames at any particular cadence. Only the entity on the other end that is consuming them knows when is the correct or the best time for a new frame to be produced. So, in, in once again, in this, in this encoder case, in this software mixer case, and in the 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 sensor case, in all three of these cases, you could have a push or pull model. There's nothing from, a, from an implementation perspective, there's nothing stopping you from doing it either way. But in the, the description, as I understand it from our talking in Prabhu, it sounds like this one might be served better with some sort of a push model versus the other examples I, I gave might be served better by a pull model even though either one is potentially valid.